Stealth has always been expensive. We're not just talking about the billions of dollars spent on research and development, but the grueling hours of maintenance required to preserve every square meter of an aircraft's secret radar absorbent coating. The B-2 Spirit proved this better than any press release ever could. But its successor, the B-21 Raider, has been given a mission that seems almost contradictory to be even more advanced, even more capable, and yet consistently available throughout its life cycle. A promise rarely heard in the context of America's newest strategic bombers. Even more advanced stealth, a huge arsenal of next-generation munitions, and an insane operational range are just a few of the things the B-21 will delight us with. But what compromises did this revolutionary bomber have to make in order to not completely empty the pockets of American taxpayers? Let's figure that out. When the Air Force began developing the B-21 Raider, the ghost of the B-2 Spirit was never far from their minds. It was a cautionary tale of what happens when innovation and spending get out of control. They were determined to create a successful production strategic bomber, not another wildly progressive but ultimately one-off masterpiece. The service was particularly careful to lock the Raider's price tag at $550 million per unit in 2010 dollars. That's about $692 million today when adjusted for inflation. This forced Northrop Grumman to control costs and prevent them from spiraling. Of course, as befits the development of a strategic bomber, the exact budget details are highly classified, making it virtually impossible to publicly track how effectively it's meeting those cost targets. Either way, nearly 11 years later, in December of 2022, we finally got to see what Northrop's talented team of engineers had been working on. But instead of widespread delight, many observers decided they were looking at nothing more than a B-2 version 2.0. That assessment is unfair, to say the least. The new bomber is indeed smaller than its predecessor, with a wingspan of about 132 feet versus the B-2's massive 172 feet. The empty weight of the Raider is estimated to be nearly half that of the Spirit. But the B-21's smaller size was a deliberate, strategic design choice. What appears to be a trade-off actually allowed engineers to enhance both the aircraft's strategic and operational advantages. You see, when it comes to modern stealth aircraft, bigger doesn't equal better. Sensor technology, signal processing methods, and multi-band system integration have all evolved much faster than we think. Hiding a low-profile, flat, yet monstrously huge aircraft from modern network radar systems is an immense challenge. The smaller the aircraft, the smaller its effective scattering area, or ESR. To put it in perspective, if the B-1 Lancer's radar cross-section was about 10 square meters, comparable to a passenger car flying in the sky, the B-2's was a tiny 0.001 square meters, resembling a bumblebee or a golf ball on radar. In the case of the B-21 Raider, the figure is, according to military sources, simply insane, comparable to a mosquito. The difference between the B-2 and the B-21 in terms of stealth technology is as deep as the Mariana Trench. The B-2 pioneered first-generation stealth, while its successor has received the very best stealth parameters available today, those from Generation 5 Plus. Every screw, every bolt, and every seam of the new bomber is engineered to reduce its signature in the radio frequency, infrared, and acoustic ranges. Thanks to this, the aircraft turned out to be virtually invisible at all 360 degrees. The Spirit, while innovative for its time, was designed by concentrating stealth characteristics mainly in the front, leaving the rear more exposed. The B-21's compact size will allow it to more effectively penetrate regions teeming with the most advanced air defense systems and destroy targets or collect intelligence in environments where the B-2 would be at significant risk. 
Not to mention, this new generation of strategic bomber does not have the nearly as capricious a coating as its predecessor, which required a specialized temperature-controlled environment and hangars. After all, the main pain of early stealth was concentrated not in flight, but in the workshop. The B-2 took this to the point of absurdity. According to the Government Accountability Office, after each flight, some of the Spirit's low observable materials were damaged, and these delicate repairs accounted for a staggering 39% of the 80 maintenance hours required for every single hour in the air. The B-21, on the other hand, was designed to be free of this headache from the very start. Many were rightly concerned that the Raider's reduction in size would directly impact its operational range. But range is not simply liters of fuel in the wing. Today, it's a complex formula of fuel capacity multiplied by aerodynamics, specific engine consumption, and mission profile. Simply put, what matters is how effectively your bomber uses the fuel entrusted to it, not whether it resembles a gas tank with wings. In the 30 years since the Spirit's introduction, engine and systems efficiency has improved dramatically. Mission profiles have shifted from lugging heavy, unguided bombs close to targets to launching long-range precision ordnance from outside heavily defended air defense bubbles. The advent of weapons like the nuclear-armed AGM-181 long-range standoff cruise missile and the upgraded B-6113 nuclear bomb only reinforces the view that the lion's share of missions can now be accomplished by launching munitions while remaining at a safe distance from the enemy. Now, some will rightly note that this goes against the concept of the Raider as a deep penetration aircraft, something we mentioned earlier. But today's air defense has become so multi-layered and networked, with low-frequency radars, high-resolution infrared systems and passive sensors, that striking blindly has become a million times more difficult. Since there is no point in risking a multi-billion dollar aircraft against a target that a missile could reach perfectly, it was decided to make the B-21 a hybrid. Of course, it retains its excellent ability to quietly slip into heavily protected enemy territory for hidden command posts or targets that can only be destroyed from a short distance with the highest possible accuracy, a standoff weapon just doesn't guarantee success. But this doesn't prevent the bomber from also being used as a long-range launch platform employing its arsenal from a safe distance without ever entering the enemy's kill zone. The engines remain one of the most discussed topics surrounding the B-21. It was previously reported that it could receive two Pratt & Whitney PW9000 turbofans using the core of the civilian PW1000G engine. However, the latest data indicates the Raider might be receiving modified F-135s, familiar to us from the F-35 fighter program. Why? Firstly, they're damn good. And secondly, they're relatively inexpensive and proven. Here again, credit must be given to the brilliant engineers at Northrop who have perfected the design of deep recess air intakes on their stealth aircraft ever since the B-21's great-grandfather, the Tacit Blue Demonstrator. It's almost impossible to spot them on the flawless surface of the aircraft's body. Although one of the key differences between the Raider and the Spirit lies not in the contour of its edges, but in its digital architecture. It's designed from the ground up for open mission systems. It's not a frozen monolith, but a flexible aerial platform that can be adapted to new missions over decades. New components, software, and weapons can be added without a major overhaul of the entire aircraft comparable to installing an update for an app on your smartphone. A similar approach is being used by the Air Force for the future sixth-generation fighter of the next-generation air dominance program. And it's not surprising that the B-21 Raider will work in a single network with that future fighter. After all, the military has repeatedly emphasized that they expect the wars of the future to be exclusively network-centric. We're not talking about supercomputers with AI instead of guns, but about the seamless connectivity of all assets on the battlefield into a single information network, where they will constantly exchange data, forming a single unified operational picture. The B-21 Raider is seen as the backbone of the future bomber force. As the B-1 and B-2 are retired, they will be replaced by a two-bomber fleet. 
the B-21, and the upgraded B-52. That's right, you didn't really think the big, ugly, fat fella would be gone before the 2040s, did you? According to the Air Force, the first Raiders could be combat-ready as early as 2026 if the need arises. Northrop Grumman also said it plans to test-fly two new bombers that year, and stated the aircraft are so close to their final production configuration they could be quickly deployed if needed. This is incredibly encouraging, considering that prototypes are typically bare-bones platforms that lack many of the systems needed for real combat. The B-21 was a welcome exception, with extensive virtual testing in a digital environment prior to production, as well as over a thousand hours of testing its avionics on a separate test aircraft. As for the target purchase volume, the Air Force has a preliminary plan for a fleet of at least 100 B-21s, spending at least $203 billion on them over 30 years, including development, procurement, and operations. This is already five times more than the number of B-2 Spirits built during its entire life cycle. But let's face it, it'd be foolish to deny that the B-2 became an icon. It was a living proof that stealth works, and it paved the way for dozens of other innovative aircraft. The B-21, on the other hand, is intended to be a stable, reliable component of the force, one that's less frequently discussed on forums, but which underpins the planning of any major U.S. Air Force operation. This is the fundamental change in philosophy, from one-of-a-kind masterpieces to practical, effective field tools. Tools that you can not only keep in service for decades, like the legendary B-52 Stratus Fortress, but also easily scale up for a specific task, without spending all the money in the world. This new bomber will finally help us live in a world where stealth is no longer an exotic craft, but where invisibility becomes the standard for modern combat aviation. How many Raiders do you think the U.S. will need in the future to win in a network-centric war? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.